TV Crazy Man here. In this video, we look at goofs and fun facts from Happy Days, one of the biggest classic TV hits of the 1970s and 80s. That was a show about the 50s and the 60s, featuring the coolest dude to ever star on television, the Fonz. <laughs> You'll see things appear and disappear, reshape right in front of your eyes. And then you'll also see items from the future pop up in the 1950s, years ahead of schedule. <laughs> Do you think the Happy Days in the Gang cartoon may hold the key? Or was the time traveling Mork to blame? Or did they just think nobody would notice? Stay tuned for crazy moments and theories that no one has ever dared speak of as we go back to the 50s. Or the 70s, depending on how you look at it. Before we get into time, what about space? Did you ever notice that it appears as though the guy's restroom occupies the same space as the girl's restroom? After the third season, the fellows would go into the restroom and take a ride, which would mean they were walking over the girl's restroom. Unless I'm mistaken, the sinks in the men's restroom would be about where the girl's restroom door should be. Believe it or not. Well, there's no reason to get that upset about it. It's still a great show. Happy Days runs roughly through 1955 to 1965. In the first couple of seasons in particular, things felt really accurate to that time period. But as time went on, things started to change, especially in the third season. Is it a coincidence that 1957 was the year that Fonz and the Happy Days gang were lost in time on the cartoon series? Why that particular date? When on the regular series, they were well into the 8th season and in the 1960s. Could have been because Richie and Ralph were no longer on the show by that time. But, I do wonder. I feel like he's got girl problems. What makes you think you're so smart, Chuck? Remember Richie's brother Chuck, who if I'm not mistaken was completely written out of the show by the 3rd season? Could the time traveling Happy Days gang have accidentally erased Richie's brother Chuck from existence? Chuck was played by three different actors, counting the Love American style pilot. It was almost as if Chuck's entire existence was unstable at best. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. That's incredible! In the pilot episode, the diner, where everybody hangs out, was named Arthur's. In every other episode, the name was Arnold's. Strange, since Fonzie's first name was Arthur, I wonder if it's connected somehow. Hey! Why'd you change your name? Sign's very expensive. You know how many letters in Takahashi? In the first season episode, guess who's coming to visit? The Cunninghams watch an episode of The Untouchables. But that show didn't air until 1959, and the first season of Happy Days is supposed to be occurring in 1955. Could this be yet another hiccup in the time stream? <laughs> oh, humor! Yeah, I'm definitely not ruling out Mork as the cause. Of course, he traveled from 1979 to the 50s, or was it 60s, to visit the Cunninghams. On the episode, In the Name of Love, how does Fonzie get a hold of a Hot Rod magazine dated October 1973, almost 20 years later? A search on eBay using the keywords Hot Rod Magazine October 1973 will show this magazine for sale for around 14 bucks, at least at the time of the making in this video. In the first episode of the second season, we see Richie drive up in his new convertible that he doesn't buy from Fonzie until the very next episode. Something's gotta work! Oh, moon craters! Now some of you might be tempted to say that they simply got the episodes out of order. But did they really? Ha 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 ha! Very funny! Excuse me, are there palm trees in Milwaukee? I'm just asking. Why is he still here? <laughs> she told me when I was having my tonsils out that I was going to a parade. And now we come to something even weirder. In the season 2 episode Haunted, Fonzie tells Richie he had his tonsils out when he was a kid. But in season 5, Fonzie has his tonsils removed again in the episode The Fonsolectomy. I think I said that right. History has apparently been changed. Oh, my old man took off when I was 12 years old. I haven't seen him since. I know an old man who split when I was four years old. Wrong. The Fonz is wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. Obviously, the Fonz couldn't be wrong, especially about something as important as this. Leaving time travel is the only reasonable explanation. 
Why is this woman wearing 70s style bell bottoms in the 1950s? Of course, the only logical conclusion one can make is that she has to be a time traveler. Cosmic Comets, I found the problem! Rich, remember the dollar I loaned you last week? In the episode Kiss Me Sickly, there's another strange character that seems to appear everywhere at once. He's seen on the floor of Arnold's and sitting behind Richie a second later. Notice he seems to be eyeing Richie for some reason. Fonz is about to play a new machine. Who walks out? Nobody, nobody Fonz, Fonz nobody. nobody. In the episode, Fonzie moves in, the pinball machine Fonzie is playing changes his design when Fonzie and Richie are leaving Arnold's. Plus, the people that are sitting behind him have changed. This strange morphing pinball machine anomaly takes place again in the episode Arnold's Wedding. Don't Arnold! Takahashi! Takahashi! Did you know that Pat Morita taught Richie Cunningham the martial arts years before the Karate Kid? Believe it or not. Did you know that Ron Howard went on a date with Cindy Williams as Shirley on Happy Days, and he dated her on the movie American Graffiti, and they played as a married couple in its sequel? In the episode, The Book of Records, Howard is reading a newspaper that appears to be from the future. Check out the 70s automobile. I would be tempted to assume that Mark left it after a return from 1979, but he doesn't show up until the next season. Well, I don't have to come back to Earth. I live on Earth in the year 1979. So, it must have been left over from the time travel adventures of Fonz and the Happy Days gang when they returned to 1957. Whoa. In the episode, The Apartment, Potsy is reading a Superman comic book that won't be out until 1974. This could have been left by Mork, because I think he was a Superman fan after all. I don't know. I'm pretty confused. So am I, Lois. So am I. In the episode, Fonzie's Baptism of Season 4, where we should be somewhere between 1959 and 1960, there's two later model cars shown outside the church where Fonzie is at. When you enter the time tunnel, almost anything can happen. By the sixth season, it was apparent that time travelers from the 70s had taken over Milwaukee. See how many of them you can spot dancing on Arnold's floor. Like this Mike Brady clone. I'm pretty reasonably sure that nobody in the 1960s had hair that was over their ears. Well, I mean men, of course. Of course, Potsy's hair was definitely out of 1979. Sit on it, Potsy! Well, I didn't mean to get that started. It seemed like everybody was always picking on Potsy. Here's a power you didn't know the Fonz had, I bet. Ralph is alone. The Fonz comes in, knocks the wall, which turns on the lights. And he walks towards Ralph, and food that was previously on one of the tables has either vanished or completely disintegrated by Fonzie's knock on the wall. Whoa, twice in one night. <laughs> Whoa, twice in one night. <laughs> Whoa, twice in one night. <laughs> you know, the only real goof from Happy Days is the fact they haven't put out the entire series on DVD. So far, we've only gotten up to season six, which is a dirty shame. Well, for your convenience, just in case you haven't seen it before or watching all these Happy Days moments has put you in the mood, here's some bloopers from Happy Days and spinoff Laverne and Shirley, plus some more goofs and bloopers from Mork and Minnie that I posted a few months back. Oh, golly gee, fun! <laughs> well, I only said one golly gee. He tried to send Elaine home. That's no, I did it again. <laughs> It's Eileen. Okay, here we go. Take it the same place. I get so confused with so many. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Oh, golly gee, Bon. I only said one golly gee. Hey, he tried to send Elaine home. That's I not did. good. The fun is she's not played guessing games while chewing. <laughs> you remember the girl with the motorcycle all dressed in pink? Pinky put Pinky putts. <laughs> oh, golly, gee, uh... 
I only said one golly gee. Wait, no wait. Joni, go upstairs and study. Or you can forget about Friday night and jo Jenny Piccolo's. <laughs> the lawn, right? So I just take a, a, a friend of the house, Chevy. So let's get him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, look, what's... <laughs> Ship ahoy. I tell you, if I knew I was going to sit over. Shit. Well, don't worry. I'll do better next year. Are you kidding? Last year. Wait, hold it. What is the line? I don't even have a line. Window featuring. In my window, rather, featuring all the. Uh, the. Uh, whatever the heck it is. <laughs> Richard, the fines is now. <laughs> In my store, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> you do that again? <laughs> wait, wait till Ronnie gets all of me. I hope you folks don't have any plans until later this evening. <laughs> Must never so happen. I failed. Watch out. <laughs> Take back. I thought you were young about that. Hey, Richie, the fans did not play guessing games while chewing. <laughs> Richie, Richie would be right if he knew. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> They could play at the annual Leopard Lodge for Pa Duda. Fine, she's not played guessing game. Come on, come on. We got that long. Hey, fine. Hey, <laughs> Pull him down that. Look, 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 I'll take it right back. As a matter of fact, I'm putting these gloves on backwards. <laughs> Richard, the Fonz did not play guessing games. Hey, Richard, the Fonz did not play guessing games. We were just discussing how great you all say. Oh, thank you very much. We wouldn't have a group without Joni. Yeah. Oh, you'll be so successful. Do you have a wedding? Right. How about uh, early tomorrow morning, first thing? I'll be there at 6 a.m. No, nah, don't, don't show her your foot. Let's start over. Okay, I got it. I want you to act lily livid and chicken belly just like every. <laughs> Annie, let's say you and me go down and see them steam ream the. <laughs> okay. I want you to act lily livid. <laughs> you sent me a lot of. False pretenses? Yes, yes. That is? False pretenses. Got it. Mm -hmm. I want you to act chicken. <laughs> Remember the time that Cindy... Shirley. Shirley. <laughs> well, Chicken. you know, live a lily. I see. <laughs> you picking up on this? It's real subtle here. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? You want me to act yellow-bellied and lily-livered? Yeah, that's it! Okay, that just struck me just then. I thought, hey, it'll work. <laughs> what is that? What? The cradle. Cradle? Ha! Births of derisive laughter. Laughter. <laughs> Something like that. I go back. More. You and I have got to have a talk. It's not nice to sit on your face. One second, Mark's watching television. Minnie turns it off, and then it's just gone. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, well, I'm okay now. Let me take it back one second. I screwed that all up. <laughs> but they didn't know. <laughs> Mindy, I got the scholarship to Notre Dame. <laughs> Just kidding. The thing I hate is sitting in a room full of losers listening to some... <laughs> Able to leap over tall buildings? Ha! <laughs> Anybody can do that in zero gravity. Robin Williams and Superman Christopher Reeve were college roommates and remained good friends their entire lives.
But in the episode, Mork the Tolerant, Mork writes Superman a nasty letter. Dear Superman, Dean, how can you call yourself a man of steel if you wear blue tights with the underwear on the outside? You're a drive turkey in red booties. Love, your friend, Mork for Mork. The only problem, Superman will probably need his x-ray vision to see any writing on that letter because it seems to be invisible. That wasn't the only time that Superman showed up. I've actually got this one in my collection. We've got to move. We've got a deadline. We've got people to meet. Good. Oh, they fly. Dinner. They Here's another goof for you. In the episode PS 2001, Murph's pet frog turns into a really cheap prop with his mouth stuck open on the longer shots. I vaguely remember back in 81 pointing this out to my mom or my sister or somebody. I'm just not sure. <laughs> I hate to barge in like this, oh. but Mark, Mark, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, sugar ship. Oh, yes. <laughs> I've got to stay your ocean your ship. Sure you and reset. Oh, Ross, I'm here. To the nothing. Oops. Ha <laughs> 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 Oh. Wait, I know where we are. <laughs> Tell me, shut up! <laughs> Have you seen anything like that? You mean like that big, hairy, Bigfoot standing right behind you? Check out my latest cartoon on my other channel, the Freddy Cat Cartoons channel, where I relive my childhood with this tribute parody to the Six Million Dollar Man, starring my own cartoon character, Freddy Cat. In the last poll, looks like most of you have wanted me to focus on the 70s Battlestar Galactica, which I'm currently watching, and, and Rocky and Bullwinkle. So expect new upcoming videos on those two shows sooner than later. The rest of the shows in the poll will definitely show up eventually as well, just maybe not quite as fast. Well, thanks for watching my latest TV Crazy Man video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Comment, let me know what you thought. Post your memories of happy days. Oh, and please hit the like too. It helps out the video and the channel. Have a great day.